I think a lot of people look at the amount of fundraising and they get nervous, right? We, we say there's, there's so much capital available and people haven't been spending it. So what does that mean? But, you know, at the end of the day, people are putting capital where they think they're going to get the best return. So I think this 2017 fundraising is actually a real sign of confidence for where deal making is going to go for private equity in the future. They have had some challenges putting the money to work for, uh, for a variety of reasons, including competition with the, with the corporate buyers. But there's a ton of scratch available now for, for deal making. And uh, you know, a, a, lot of, a lot of factors are coming together to make okay, it a but, pretty good environment. But tell me, am I, am I, are we looking at 2006, six seven? Because there was some huge vintage fundraise, yeah. fundraisers then. There was an argument back then that um, big guys were no longer off limits. Everyone was going to go after TXU and all of these massive acquisitions. Right. And that there was more um, opportunity on the bigger side, actually. And they were competing, by the way. There were strategics running around, strategic buyers running around who could actually now offer this inflated stock if they wanted to. So what's, what's to say the 2008, why would you want to put all this money to work right now? Well, uh, you got, it's two separate points. One is there's a ton of money available. It's, yes. But we're not in a world where we're, we're not in the mega deal L LBO phase that we were in the pre financial crisis period. So the story of PE over the last decade has been a constant churn in mid-market deals. Obviously, mid-market's gotten a little bit bigger on the, on the high end than it used to be. But, you know, 200 million, 500 million, billion, couple billion dollar deals. With rare exceptions, people are not, haven't done, you know, the 20 billion, 30 billion, 40 billion dollar deals. Um, so, you know, I don't think there's any concern about this current period turning into the pre-crisis period where people were doing those deals basically for for financial engineering purposes because the debt was so cheap um it's a different world now they're spending a lot of time looking at these companies that are really not overpaying they're being conservative um and i think that's why they're able to raise so much money so what do you think what, what is the kind of deal you think is going to happen i mean if you were to sort of you 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 know the pipeline better than i do yep. you're right there so what's happening? It's a good, it's a good pipeline. Uh, well, what kind of deals are we looking at? Are we looking at take privates? Are we looking at picking off uh, pieces of, of larger companies? Yeah, I, it's, look, I still think we're in the middle market zone. There may be some take privates, smaller take privates. There's not, you know, none of these PE firms are going to be buying the $80 billion companies like we're seeing in, on the non-PE side. Um, and they're putting their their money to use in creative ways. It's not just buying a buying because a private they think company. Because prices it's, have come, they've gotten so expensive. It, right, and it's hard to, and it's hard to compete on that level, and it's also hard to compete with the with the because of the prices. But it's hard to compete with the corporate buyers. Good time to be taking your companies public again, though. The yes. Things that you've had in your portfolio. Yes. Yeah, there's, that's, pick, that's, that's picking up. Should we look at that, though, as a, a signal for a worrisome thing? I mean, if private equity thinks prices are expensive, but they think it's a good time to be unloading things, does, does that tell the average retail investor that we're getting towards the end of something, or does that tell us nothing? It, t it probably tells you something. I'm not sure it tells you that we're at the end of something. Um, you know, this stuff is, is sort of is cyclical in nature, in the, and it's getting expensive. but. Uh, at the same time, sellers see their valuations going up and they're holding on to it more, thinking, right. well, if I hold on a little bit longer, I'm going to get is more. The Real quick, is the change in tax policy affects you how? I'm sure all of your clients have called you and said, what is this going to do to our businesses? What's the, so I think what's I, the answer? I, well, on balance, the answer is it's a positive. It's for, a huge positive for, on the corporate tax side. And that, then that benefits private right. equity, right? Because all these, most of these portfolio companies are corporate. In terms of how depreciation works and some of the other things, are there any, are there any little pieces that are that work differently on the private equity land? There, uh, I, I think the one, I think the ones that people are focused on is you can now expense all your capital expenditures right. immediately, which means you theoretically ought to be paying fewer taxes every year. The carried interest, um, retention of the carried interest uh, is obviously helpful from the private equity perspective. Um, and then the, and to then the, the private equity lower, executives, not to corporate. the actual returns of the company. Well, but correct, but it helps the, it, it means that they don't have to figure out something, some other way to deal with that, right? So it, it takes that off the table. It was a plus for them. You know, a lot of people don't like it. People who benefit from it do, but it, it okay. kind of is what it is, and it's a it's right. a plus in terms of uh, okay. stimulating deal making.
there, thanks for checking out CNBC on YouTube. Be sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of the day's biggest stories. You can also click on any of the videos around me to watch the latest from CNBC. Thanks for watching.